Fire cleanses. Fire burns. Fire warms. Fire transmutes. Fire destroys. The symbol and the fact of fire. Taken in every meaning are particularly appropriate to this period of time which we have called a season. Well, how long is a season? A season can be more than spring or summer or winter or fall. A season is rather a flexible period of time, as you know, uh, living in Minnesota, that some seasons may stretch five or six months and others be as brief as a month or two. The season that you are all entering now, that humanity is entering, that earth is entering, is by every measurement a season of fire. Let us look at the nature of this fire from the viewpoint of those on the path to wholeness, to the triunity of being, and from the point of view of those who have in this life chosen to embrace fear ever more tightly. We have said from the beginning of our speaking to you that the situation of change is creating an intensification of the polarity of all things that is the chief characteristic of the duality in which you all dwell the duality, the separation into light and dark, conscious and unconscious, love and fear, the morass of darkness and pain that has been the human lot, the polarity, the good, the bad, the positive, the negative, as the Christ energy made its appearance over a year ago, nearly a year and a half now, that powerful energy entering in to human life affects all, not just those who are open to it, those who are prepared for it, those who awaken to it, but to those that deny it, those that oppose it, it is a real change in the environment of humankind. And as such must be felt, experienced, on all levels of humanity, in all of the institutions of humanity, in the entire human culture, in all of its variations. While we in the West who are aware of it may refer to it as Christ energy. The energy is the same and it is universal. And the changes that are going on are providing a tremendous strain on the fabric of reality. You are learning in your own lives that there is much more to be seen, to be heard, to be learned, to be understood than you had ever suspected before. You are catching glimpses of the infinite complexity of reality, the layered quality. Le reality is not made of stone or iron. It is not unbending or unchanging. It is subjective in the eyes and in the experience of every separate and unique human being, creating a unique reality that is unlike 
any other individual subjective reality. The objective reality, too, that which everyone pretty much agrees on, that, too, is subject to change. You live in a universe of constant change and constant growth, a universe of breathing in and out, a universe that is in itself always changing in minute detail and ultimately changing in the largest sense. We speak so often of energies. Well, we wish we could be more specific, but there are words lacking to define what is new in human experience, new awareness. And so the changes that are taking place are changing everything. Now, the changes are subtle, they are gradual, and therefore, when you look around, you think, well, everything's pretty much the same way as it was yesterday. But it's not anything like it was a few years ago. Your own lives are testament to that. You are not who you were as you have chosen a path of change, of growth, of wholeness. So many of you have challenged lifelong and lives-long fears just over the period of a few months and years, accepting growth that had been long denied. It is not a coincidence that there are so many of you and that you are proliferating throughout the world, those who are awakening. As you awaken, your inner environment changes, forcing change in your outer environment. You no longer feel the way you used to because you no longer are the person you used to be. You are, in fact, becoming a new creature, changing on the very uh, molecular level. <coughs> and the changes as they continue, the growth prompted, triggered by the releases of Christ energy as they affect your lives, opening you, testing you, challenging you, so you grow stronger and stronger, far beyond the limits that you had previously assigned yourself. Each new wave of energy, at first greeted with dismay, with confusion, and then assimilated, accepted, and standing as a platform from which to reach the next level. But your growth and the rapid increase in the speed of your growth is only one part of the story. There is an acceleration of events, indeed an acceleration of time itself. If things seem like they are moving faster than they used to, if it seems to you a shorter and shorter period of time, from season to season. If it seems to you that you just took down the Christmas tree, do uh, uh, listen to that intuitive knowledge because events are moving faster and faster and not only for you. For you it is positive, however painful, from time to time. However discombobulating changes that you don't fully understand or fully realize. But for you, it is positive. It is growth. You can see in yourself and in your life positive change. Opening to new questions and finding new answers. Gradually giving yourself the love and the approval 
that is so needed in your growth and that you have denied yourself for so long, gradually learning to receive, gradually learning to give to yourself, gradually, finally, after lifetime after lifetime, growing up. How often human beings have said to themselves and to others as, as they have grown older, inside, I'm not so different. I'm still afraid of the dark. I'm still insecure. I'm still uncertain. I'm still self-doubting. I'm still afraid of new experiences. I'm still a child, a tall, wrinkled child. No more. That has been the truth. Because lifetime after lifetime has been lived in the duality, experiencing fear, gradually facing a bit of it here and a bit of it there and, and chewing off the karma, but never finding wholeness. Never has it been time. Never has the promise made 2,000 years ago been fulfilled. In your life, in this life, you are becoming Christ. Now we emphasize this not only to cheerlead you on to victory, but to point out that where there is such positive change, where that white gold energy of the Christ is creating this ability to transform your life, your reality, in a positive way. So is the presence of this powerful transformative energy creating an equal and opposite backlash. Fear dominating. In the beginning of this period of time, here is an ocean of darkness Humankind lost in fear, fighting within themselves, fighting each other, everyone fearful of their neighbor. And then a light turns on. A new energy appears, a bit of it. As much as those of you who've opened to the path can deal with, but just a bit, a sliver of light in the darkness. And that sliver has already grown. And now there's a powerful ray of light piercing the darkness. But the darkness is ever darker because of the contrast. This powerful transformative energy is setting off alarm bells. Those who are not yet Everyone ultimately passes the tests and the challenges and comes into wholeness. But many, many, many in this earth alive today will die in fear and will kill in fear. Not lost forever. Their time, their place will come. But this time this enormously vital, unique time in human history. Imagine, if you can, looking back on the long and gradual journey of humankind, how long it took to go through phase after phase of growth, of war, of peace, of despair, of hope, up and down. And now, in the space of a single generation, 25, 30 years total, everything is changing. And enough is visible to you now who have been looking and who have been awakened and who are now alert to change, that you no longer feel quite so questioning as to whether you may or may not have lost your sanity after all. Now you've seen enough 
change in your own life. Now you have observed on the wider stage of humanity the fulfillment of enough prophecy from enough sources to be standing on firmer ground when you say, yes, there is a path. Yes, it does lead to wholeness. Yes, it is my destiny. But this period of time, this 30 years that you're already in, it's not 30 left, this period of time is a death, the death of fear, the death of those ruled by fear, the ending of a reality dominated by fear, and a birth. Each of you, and all of you have seen now, one by one, meeting in the most unlikely places, the most unlikely people, others all around you, in your family, in your friends, people you meet, people you work with, rubbing their eyes, blinking their eyes, awakening, looking around, joining this journey into the light. That is the swelling tide. It is inevitable that the birth take place. It is inevitable that the death take place. But the period of time of death and of birth is a period of crisis. A period of destruction, purification, transmutation. When you, in your lives, go through a personal fire that cannot destroy you and that will purify you. What does purify mean? It sounds boring. Purify does not mean winding up a Puritan. To purify you, your life, your energy, to clarify to cleanse away the stains of guilt, of sin, of fear in all of its forms. The fire of challenge. Well, for many of you by now, that word no longer brings the fear that it once did. Oh no, another challenge. Because now most of you have come long enough, far enough, to know that you're going to make it. You've grown strong enough in your belief to know, all right, it's a challenge, and I accept. Resignation is no part of your life. Acceptance is becoming a part of your life. Acceptance of your own strength, acceptance of your own belief, your faith, acceptance of the challenge that now you know is only going to make you stronger. You are the incoming tide. And as you grow to love yourself, be proud and respectful of yourself, because you have challenged so much accepted so much, been so willing and so strong, that finally, even to eyes that have condemned yourself again and again and again, found yourself always wanting, looked and seen only the warts in the mirror, finally you can accept, I'm okay. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty brave. I'm pretty loving. Life is okay. And that isn't Pollyanna. That's the reality that you're being born into. Joy, wholeness, the end of the shadow. No longer, when this period of fire is completed, will you be haunted by the ghosts of your childhood. No longer will be, uh, you be nursing the grudges 
against those who you think have betrayed you, abandoned you, failed you in one way or another. No more will you look at your children and think, I know I've gone wrong somewhere. I've failed. I'm not worthy. You are leaving all of that behind. And we refer to this season of fire of cleansing and purification, fire of transmutation. What does that mean? Well, when you heat certain things, you can change their character, what they are, their molecular structure. You can take two different kinds of metal and make an incredibly powerful alloy out of it by heating it with fire. You can create fundamental change, creating a new being, more powerful than ever before, cleansing, cleansing away the pain. But it's the beauty of it. It's not something that's being done for you. It's not a gift that you're accepting from someone else, God or anyone else. You are in the process of learning about yourself, learning who you are. Well, who are you? You're God. Who else? God is the totality. All that has been created has been created in the image of God. You have lied to yourself and accepted lies about yourself because you've forgotten, because you entered into the darkness willingly. Why? Because you like being lost? Because you like suffering? Because you like pain? No, because you are God and cannot be defeated. And in your exploration into the darkness of fears that are illusion, but that you have provisionally believed in and empowered by your belief to cause harm and damage, and because in your infinite patience and in your infinite love, you have gone through agonizing life after life, believing in death, believing in loss, believing in the pain that you drew to yourself, because you knew before you forgot that you were doing this. You were setting forth on this frightening adventure because in that process of search, in that process of feeling that you had been lost, separated from God, you learn. You learn survival. You learn patience. You learn adaptation. You learn to create. You learn to transcend. You learn to be God. And in your learning, each of you, each cell of God's body, complete, God grows. That which is perfect becomes more perfect. You are not only a part of that, you're it. It is only in this land of delusion that you can say and believe, I'm me and you're you. And that makes two. But it doesn't. I'm me and I'm you. And you're you and I'm me and we're each other. And that makes one. Gradually, as this human journey continues past this time of birth and death into the experiencing of wholeness. As you each grow life to life to life to life, as you expand your understanding of what it means to be whole, you grow into your godhood. This step of human development, beginning now in this lifetime, for you and for all humanity, is the final step 
of human life. The completion of the human equation. The balancing of body, mind, and spirit. And now the exploration of what that all means. What that magnification of your understanding of yourself is going to mean to you, to humanity, and to the universe. You human beings, as does every other race in the universe, have a special mission. And as you now, as a race, awaken, you are being welcomed into a universal community. But you are being welcomed now behind the scenes quietly, inconspicuously, so that if anything is noticed by those who have committed themselves to fear for this life, they'll think it's just silly. It's just nonsense, delusion, illusion, lies, the devil, whatever. And so you who are growing new eyes to see and new ears to hear with and a new mind to understand with and a new heart to be wise with, you'll see the signs. You'll hear the welcome. You'll begin the work. And the work of humanity is healing. Healing. On every level, physical, emotional, spiritual, the gift of healing. What was the greatest gift that your model, your role model, Christ, demonstrated? The gift of healing. Saying, look and see that there is no death. Look at Lazarus. Death is an illusion. That there is no illness, no disease. Take up thy bed and walk. That you, human beings, have that power. Christ never said, only I can do this. So watch. He was saying, look what you can do when you accept the reality of love. When you recognize that you are eternal beings. And now, in your lives of beginnings, you yourselves are learning to heal. You're healing yourself. It doesn't matter if you've never taken a healing course or never laid a hand in healing on anyone. If you are on this path, you're in the healing business. Because that's what this is about. Getting well. Getting over the fever of illusion. And what you're learning in your journey and what you're sharing with the other pilgrims on this path is the foundation of the human journey for the next 2,000 years. You are the founding fathers and the founding mothers of a new race. Homo sapien has had it. Thinking wasn't enough. It only got you in trouble. Because you pushed down the spirit. Said, I, I don't hear a thing. Well, now you're acknowledging the spirit. Now you're bringing it up into wholeness within you. And now you're be really becoming human beings. You're becoming the triune human beings. And writing a new chapter. And you're doing it by going through the fire. You've been going through the fire. And I've, I've, uh, I've uh, been uh, very amused uh, and uh, quite enjoyed the uh, concept of the fire walking because it's such an appropriate uh, lesson that the fire that burns is also under your control for you have mastery of all things. And the symbol of fire, well, you know, after the flood, what did God say? 
fire next time. The Bible and other books of prophetic content <coughs> has been changed and altered uh, thoroughly through its uh, long, long history, changed uh, through faulty memories, uh, changed through uh, shifting political allegiances, <laughs> changed because of uh, cultural uh, conflict with uh, truths that weren't palatable at the time, changed for a variety of reasons, not accidentally. God's not up there wringing his hands and saying, why did you change my Bible? <laughs> changed, altered, obscured, befogged, because this is a mystery school, and you are not given anything on a silver platter. You're given hints and ideas and you're given myths. And it's for you to see the kernel of gold in the bushel of dross that is God's voice and God's vision speaking through the years. And so that long ago prediction, the fire next time, from an angry, revengeful, jealous, highly insecure God, <laughs> does have its nucleus in fact. And this is the fire. The potential was total destruction of the earth by fire, the nuclear repository of human fear. The balance could have been easily tilted and another human experiment failed as you failed on Atlantis. Failed to make that leap into wholeness and had to begin again on another planet. This is the third time in this solar system. But they say the third time's a charm. And the fact is that you have altered the experiment. You have seen that in the Atlantean experience, Atlantis being the planet Atlantis that you now call Venus, that was once the jewel of the solar system, whose enormous crystal deposits could be seen far, far out in space, seeming uh, the, uh, almost as though the sun uh, had a twin, flashing fire into space, destroyed. Uh, because of imbalance, because the development of the mind was so powerful that you fell in love with it. My mind, look what I can do with it, the psychic abilities. I can change things without touching them. I can transfer myself from here to there without taking a step. What a wondrous thing is my mind. Well, when the mind is that wondrous, what's the motivation? for going through the pain, the grief, the agony of spiritual renewal and transformation. Not much. And the fire destroyed. Now, you've altered the formula. Now you have come through the period of time of experimentation with the mind in which it has been quite clear to those who had eyes to see, that things were turning out wrong. That all of these wondrous inventions and creations seemed to do no good in terms of long-term growth for humankind. Seeing that there is still enormous inequities, there is still starvation, there is still war. And so now there's motivation to change and to grow. When we began speaking a number of years ago, we said then, it cannot be predicted now whether you're going to make it or whether the death will claim you all. Now it can be said. You have free will. And you are making decisions in your life here in this building, in this city, and in this state, and upstairs, and down the block, and across the river, more and more and more, making difficult commitments. This isn't an easy path. 
This isn't a freeway. This is a narrow, crooked, confusing, apparently directionless path that you follow at your peril. The peril of that aspect of yourself that you once believed was all there was, the ego consciousness. And you have been, however long you've been involved consciously in this path, you have been threatening the life of your ego consciousness. Suicide. In order to be reborn into wholeness, the ego self had to die. Because it was lost in fear. Because it didn't believe in the spirit. And you are allowing that. And as you are allowing that, and as you are going through all of this process of change, creating a new reality, across the street and down the block and across the ocean, and in Washington and in Moscow, throughout Earth, there are those who are frightened to death who are so deeply afraid of other human beings that the slightest variation brings on a paranoia that creates a desire to kill or be killed. If the skin is a shade off, if the political philosophy doesn't agree with you, if those human beings live on the other side of an imaginary line from where you live, then you must be suspicious of them. Expect and suspect the worst. See them as a threat to your shaky reality. And these individuals by the millions lost in fear, number among them individuals who have within their hands the power to be so moved by their fear that they create the nightmare they fear so much. But what is happening? At the same time that those fear-crazed individuals around the world are creating havoc and seem to be lurching nearer and nearer worldwide disaster. At the same time, here's an individual here, and another one here, and one in Moscow, and a couple in China, and a few here and there, who are the new shoots of the new understanding, the raised consciousness, now beginning to move near positions of traditional power. That which human beings have known as power, political power, military power, that is passé. This time is changing everything. People's hearts are awakening. And that doesn't mean uh, uh, fuzzy-headed, uh, liberal, good uh, do-gooders. That means a genuine opening of the heart, not simply in sympathy, but in empathy. In looking beyond the shade off in skin color, the difference in political philosophy, all of the variations that so frighten those others are transcended. You no longer see what is immaterial. You look beneath surfaces and you recognize humanity no matter what side of the line they live on. So is it a race to the finish line to see whether the fear-crazed multitudes will have their way or will our heroes and heroines win out and finally gather enough forces to make the difference? 
It's not a contest. There's no question. Not any longer. The quality of the passage, yes, that's at question. Those who wish to create a death by fire will do their damnedest to create that. There is going to be, next year, a major increase in violence. Street violence, violence between nations. You're seeing what appear to be conflicting pictures now. You're seeing the frail tendrils of peace, disarmament, worldwide understanding beginning to show their heads. But you are also seeing increased tensions. It is no uh, coincidence, again, that uh, you are looking to the birthplace of humanity and you are looking to the birthplace of the worldwide culture as being the likely likely to be the exploding powder keg. The Middle East, the Holy Land, and what is this anger and this fear being wielded in the name of? God. Love. For people who can't tell the difference between fear and love, it is madness. Insanity. There isn't another word for it. It's suicidal. It's homicidal. It's fratricidal. It's nuts. And yet, look at how many people believe fervently in it. Saying, well, of course, nobody likes war, but if those guys try anything... <laughs> there's a failure of imagination. War is more than a three-letter word. And it's not simply that uh, the United States of America has been so uh, protected and had no uh, wars, uh, foreign wars fought on their soil that you are particularly naive in underestimating the power of war. The most war-torn nations are ready to go at it again for God, for country, for ideals for skin color, for whatever the hell seems important to them. They are not impotent. The power of fear is great when there are enough people believing in it strongly enough. doesn't matter that it's an illusion. You can get killed just as dead by an illusion if the other guy believes it's real. You have a mission, each and every one of you. First, to save yourself, to heal yourself. It must begin within. It's why you have been artificially divided into individuals. That's the workplace, the laboratory. All other healing, all other love begins at home. If you can't create for yourself a life that brings you pride and joy and satisfaction, and you can't do it for anyone else. That's your first task. And as you're working on your first task, you're already beginning your second task because the awakening of love for yourself is filling you with love that you're eager to share, with eyes that see love as your heart learns to receive love. You are not chartered to go out into all the world and convert everyone to your way of thinking. No, that's a product of fear. That's exactly what we've been talking about. I love you, and I don't want to kill you unless I have to. I'm going to tell you the truth about things, and if you're smart, you'll believe it. By your lives you will inspire. By their fruits you shall know them.
not by what you say or how many arms you twist, but the light that is shining in you and that is shining in your life will trigger light in those around you who need only that vision to awaken them. And for those who will not awake, no amount of arm twisting will convince them that you are anything but wrong or perhaps possessed by demons. There has never been in the history of this world so enormous a change of consciousness in such a short time on a worldwide basis, never anything approaching it. And those who don't understand you and don't see what you see and can't will reject you, will turn from you or turn on you. You know, through all the years that we've been speaking, we've made it a point not to be negative and not to cry doom and gloom and uh, <clears throat> add to the storehouse of fear, not to uh, accompany our encouragement for you to develop your psychic spiritual talents by saying to you, but you better be careful to protect yourself and use plenty of white light and have somebody next to you. And Adding to fear, unfortunately, has been uh, taken upon uh, as part of the task by those who are themselves awakening. But everyone's in the same boat. And those who are awakening and who teach you to be afraid are only projecting their own fear. There isn't anything to fear. That's what is the pure and simple truth. And once you grasp that, everything in your life will change. There is nothing to be afraid of because fear isn't real. There is nothing you can fail at because you are perfect. And it is only the veil of lies and illusion that have denied that truth to you. And as you grow, and as what is growing in you affects your wife, your husband, your child, your parents, your sisters, your brothers, your friends, the ripples spread and the tide turns. The fire that purifies is the fire that destroys. But destruction itself is a fear concept. Those caught by fear will look at destruction and say, that's the end of things. To destroy. <coughs> but those who are awakening to a wider understanding are looking back a little farther and saying, destruction is a part of growth. Clearing away, purifying, cleansing, reinvigorating to sweep out what is old and to welcome in what is new. Space must be made. So, although Things are going to be pretty rough for a while for a lot of people. And you're, going to, uh, you're not going to want to look at the headlines in the paper or turn on the television news. Don't be afraid. What you're doing in your life, with your consciousness, with your entire belief system, protects you and protects you in a way that someone who is not going through this process could never understand. It doesn't mean that God or the universe or your higher self is saying, don't worry, there'll be a check in the mail every week. That's why there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about because there isn't any fear. 
There's nothing to worry about because you are seeing your life and your meaning, your reason for being in a different light. Seeing that you are fulfilling your purpose for being here and wanting nothing else. Nothing can be as joyful. Nothing can be as satisfying. It doesn't matter what that purpose is or how it's going to be fulfilled. It doesn't matter how long you live in this life because you never die. You never lose your friends, your loved ones. There are no leave-takings. You are always and forever one united in love. Sure, you're not all the way there yet, and you think, well, I'd like to believe that a little more uh, realistically than I do, but you're getting there, you see. It's a journey. It's a revolution. It's a 180-degree turn in the way you've looked at things and thought about things and seen yourself in the world. Don't be hard on yourself. You're making, each and every one of you who have chosen this path willingly, however many times you think, oh, I blew it again, you're not blowing anything. You're learning and you're growing. And every time you say, I blew it again, what's really happening is you have come to a point, you say, I have to look at this. I have to understand it better. You can't fail. And you don't fail. And you're not failing. And gradually, that knowledge is going to shift your internal balance. And you will be, in fact, more love than fear. And then more and more love than fear. And finally, no fear. But that's the road that you are on. And the light that you are shedding as you clear away the clouds from your consciousness is lighting the world. And will eliminate every shadow. Don't be taken in by appearances. It's going to look like the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And most of the commentators and the politicians and the next door neighbors are all going to agree. This is terrible. We're all going to die. We're all going to be broke. Which is worse. <laughs> And you're going to be able to smile. And you're going to be keeping your head where all about you are losing theirs. And you are going to be in cultivating your patch of garden. Creating gardens all over the world. The future that you are creating is your future and the future of humanity. And the fires that challenge you will not burn you, will not destroy you. These are the fires that you have invited in because you're fireproof. Because your faith renders you impervious to the foulest attacks of fear in every form. And the challenges that come to you that are your fires of purification are coming rapidly, but you're getting better and better at dealing with them. And everyone that you deal with, there's another chip of darkness gone. Another view into the reality opening to you. We are talking about this now, tonight, because events are accelerating, because the instability of a reality in the process of change is reaching critical mass. You have been collectively living in, illusion, in an illusion regarding the functional qualities of your culture, your society. You have seen 
in this year, many arrows pointing to the next act. You are seeing in this time that would seem to require leadership of brilliance, far-seeing, you have seen midgets. You are seeing a raid for your choice to lead this nation, midgets, without vision and without even the illusion of vision. Leaders that no one with any sense would follow, leading each other. This vacuum of leadership is also part of the vast eternal plan. You're not going to need leaders, you know, in the future. You are your own leaders. You will govern through cooperation once the jealousies and the angers and the fears have dissipated. But in this transitional time, the head is being lopped off the dinosaur. There is not any wise leadership, and there will be less. You have seen in your own leaders and would-be leaders examples of how incompetent humanity is to govern itself in a state of imbalance. Mighty times has produced tiny human beings because the onslaught of onrushing events must overwhelm those assigned to contain and protect the present, the status quo, that which exists. A Winston Churchill or a Franklin Roosevelt in this time might pull the chestnuts out of the fire and we can't have that. The time is calling for midgets because events must get out of control because it must be seen that mind without spirit cannot, cannot, Create balance, harmony, peace, understanding, prosperity, and all of the wonderful things that you want. And so beginning, uh, well, beginning's already begun, but accelerating. War, next year. Not world war, but tinder fires catching. With the constant threat of a major fire, a major conflagration. And the economy that has been traveling on illusion begins to crumble. Human beings, by and large, long to continue the present, particularly those in charge who feel that they're getting some benefit out of the present. And so they will try to continue the illusion. They will try to shore up that which is uh, wishing to collapse of its own imbalance. And the effort to cut and paste and bandage will go on, but will inevitably fail. The fire is going to destroy, and it's going to destroy a lot. The population that enters this dawning age will not be as numerous as the present population. It has been important for you in your awakening to be able to focus on yourself. It has been important for the process that so many have gotten a head start, begun to find themselves on a firm footing, because you're going to be needed you're going to be realizing your purpose in large ways and small as this ancient dying reality collapses in upon itself. 
That's what you are preparing for in your fire to put out the big fire. And you will, because the big fire is fear. And love will always conquer. And so when you think of a season of fire, know that your own season of fire, the fires of challenge, the fires of cleansing, purification, transmutation, is not a long season. But the fire of destruction, the fire that burns, is beginning a long season. And again, although uh, this sounds like the doom and gloom that we promise not to get into, it's not. It isn't. It's the thrashing of a corpse that doesn't know it's dead. You ever see anyone cut the head off a chicken? It's not a, a very uh, delightful sight, but it's interesting to see how long the chicken will run around without a head. Well, the head's being cut off here. And the head's being cut off a dinosaur, and the dinosaur's thrashing its tail around in its death throes because it doesn't know it's already dead. But what happened after the dinosaurs? A great leap forward. Remember in your own lives. Remember as you watch television and read the newspaper. Remember as you see the instability of this changing world that you cannot be harmed, that you will prevail, and that your fires are the fires of purification, the fires that make stronger, and that you are the beginning and not the end. Now we'll pause uh, for a few minutes and then we'll uh, come back uh, to entertain questions. The children uh, of earth, your physical uh, form, is of the earth. The, uh, the earth is also a sentient being and it is going through a process of change. It too is being reborn. Uh, it too is uh, requiring healing. And, uh, and we would, uh, again, as we have before, uh, suggest uh, to all of you that whenever you have the opportunity, send your loving energy into the earth. Uh, every time you meditate, uh, any time you take the opportunity to go out into uh, nature, you know, you're getting so much more sensitive to, uh, to vibrations, to energies, to life that uh, it would serve you well and you'd enjoy uh, spending some time with the trees and feeling the healing energy of the trees and sharing that. It's time to reintegrate into the planet. Well, the planet is going through its own stresses and strains as you are, and uh, it is going through one of its major cyclic uh, alterations. And so, uh, yes, there is going to be an increase of earth change activity in uh, a rhythmic uh, release. That is to say there will be clusters of earth change activities followed by uh, periods of relative uh, quiescence. Uh, and we're speaking specifically of uh, volcanoes, earthquakes, uh, tidal waves, uh, all associated with the uh, turning the stresses, the strains, the efforts of the planet to regain strength and to change shape. Will the southwest uh, uh, region be a reasonably safe uh, place to live during this? Uh, uh, much of it, yes. Uh, this uh, area up here uh, is also uh, uh, pr uh, pretty safe. But uh, as we said uh, last year and as happened uh, uh, sometime later, uh, unexpected places uh, where, it wasn't, uh, where there wasn't a general awareness that there were weaknesses in the crust uh, are also going to be uh, uh, feeling the effect of these changes. Um, it seems to me that although we see a lot of midgets in our government, <laughs> great term, uh, that in this 
change time, there, there <coughs> must be places also for people with the evolving consciousness. Um, is Pat Schroeder one of those people, and does she have a chance at the presidency? <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> um, it, yes, uh, she is. Uh, but no, uh, she doesn't have any uh, uh, likely uh, viable uh, chance to be president at, at this stage of the game. Um, but as we were indicating earlier, you ha it's time to begin to transcend politics, to recognize that politics by its nature is of the illusion that as that game is played, it's a power game. And uh, it doesn't matter uh, what uh, democratic uh, uh, gowns it may come attired in. It is nevertheless uh, one person attempting to make choices for others, one person taking upon themselves power over others. And uh, it is not a game that is going to be played uh, as the new age uh, grows. And so uh, what we suggest is not that you become politically idle, that you, uh, you do... Uh, uh, do as you've uh, always done, uh, chosen the uh, best of the array offered uh, according to your judgment and your intuition, but that you yourselves integrate your energy into movements, causes, efforts, whether they're individual or collective, that deal directly with uh, the symptoms of the change, that is to say, hunger, uh, uh, ecological concerns, uh, strictly political matters or ideological, uh, pol political, ideological, philosophical matters, uh, we feel are pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, beside the point. Um, what you need to do is get to, well, the phrase was get back to basics. Well, this is really getting back to basics, getting back to the earth, to your balance with it, to maintaining that loving balance, and uh, to beginning the creation of truly democratic, equal institutions. And that begins at the, uh, the grassroots uh, level of simply sharing your giving energy with others. And uh, that is the rebuilding process that's going to bear fruit uh, in the future. The political uh, structure is very unstable, less so in this country than many, but not all of uh, all that stable in this country either. Wait until the enormous pressures and primarily economic pressures come to bear, and uh, and see how quickly uh, these uh, uh, politicians uh, uh, give way. Well, on a personal level, how does the season of fire um, affect the way that we think about the ego? Well, as we were indicating, this period of time, uh, triggered uh, by uh, the uh, recent eclipse, uh, by the harmonic convergence, uh, by the, uh, uh, the nova that uh, is after uh, 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 rather a long uh, delay, the timing is right now and the energy is being felt now, and that's uh, 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 brow chakra energy primarily. Uh, because of all of these uh, changes, now is the period of time where there will become an acceleration of challenges to you. Now, don't be alarmed at that, because the challenges you've already faced were much more difficult than the ones that are coming, because you've built your strength, because you're more prepared now, because the energy, uh, it, it, it's not so much a matter of how long you've been on the path, because you are involved in a process that is a process of unification in which the energy itself creates within you more ability to change more rapidly, to assimilate more rapidly. It doesn't matter if you've uh, opened your willingness uh, for a week, a month, a year, ten years. Uh, you are nonetheless now becoming capable of assimilating change more rapidly, of accepting challenge more readily, and of rising to that challenge more easily. It didn't exist. It existed during that brief period of time 
when, uh, when uh, Christ was on earth in human form, and there was a, uh, what you might call an explosion of Christ energy at the time of the, uh, of the crucifixion and the transcendence from, uh, of death. And uh, that was sufficient to provide the impetus of the rapid early growth of Christianity. But rapidly, that energy dissipated because it is the energy of love and the world embraced fear. And uh, it is only uh, after uh, these many centuries of gradual change and gradual growth that there is a graduation class. And, uh, uh, you, you know, to graduate means gradual, slow, incremental change. And finally, there's a graduation ca class ready at last to accept the promise, to believe in love, in forgiveness, in eternal life, in the way of love. So uh, the Christ energy was only released in the spring of last year. Prior to that, the energy that sort of uh, led the way and prepared the ground, we have called the Mary energy, which was, uh, 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 as the name implies, it was the mother of the Christ energy. It, it prepared individuals uh, in, uh, so that they, as vessels, became strong enough to contain that powerful transformative energy. One gets the feeling that these challenges, challenges that you spoke about, are uh, closely aligned with, if not synonymous with, frustrations and hassles. When, what does one do to uh, put a positive face on them? And is it possible that one will ever get beyond the era of challenges to the era of satisfaction? Oh, absolutely. Uh, what is being challenged here is your response. And uh, so uh, your state of mind, your attitude, your positive uh, willingness, openness, your willingness to be vulnerable, your willingness to allow guidance from higher self rather than demand ego-oriented uh, control, uh, all of these uh, factors uh, combine so that you reach a point of recognition of the process, acceptance of the process. When you understand, and not mentally understand, but when you understand in your heart the purpose of the frustrations, you realize that banging your head against them isn't ever going to change them. That it is not a matter of assaulting the challenges. It is a matter of recognizing yourself for the first time as to your true nature, recognizing that you can come to no harm, recognizing that in your frustration you push away opportunity, recognizing that you can welcome opportunity without beating the bushes f to find it. And this recognition comes as a result of the growth due to the challenges that at first do frustrate you. The challenges, in a sense, are the frustration, whatever form they take. Because it's a direct assault on what you fear the most. Whether it is uh, your lovability in a relationship-oriented matter, whether it is your comp uh, competence, your, uh, your own power in work and career, in interpersonal relationship, whatever it is, wherever the stage that this drama is being played out in your life, that is where the primary frustrations will be felt because that's where the long, long struggle has found its focus. And gradually you do begin to see the light after challenge after challenge. You know, if you get hit in the head often enough, uh, finally you say, oh, I'm being hit in the head here. And you start to look around, see what's doing it. Well, don't be disheartened because you still get frustrated. There isn't a single individual who has grown so rapidly and so completely that they don't still occasionally get frustrated. You are human beings. 
who are discovering the God aspect of themselves. And so, uh, you know, don't be uh, impatient and hard on yourself. Patience and kindness to the self are two of the most difficult lessons to learn during this process. But you learn it not by forcing yourself and saying, I will be patient, damn it. <laughs> but by gradually growing in your understanding by the quality of your responses as you are faced again and again with the same kinds of issues. You will grow willy-nilly despite your inclination to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Yes. In the form of what? Would you repeat the question? We didn't quite what grasp it. Well, you know, uh, on Earth, because Earth is a mystery school and this is a spiritual universe, there is a message of understanding to be found in every natural circumstance, in everything that happens to you on Earth, in every natural phenomenon, there is a sermon to be understood. In, uh, in uh, the lightning, in the exchange of energy, in the attraction that draws the lightning, in what repels the lightning, in the purpose of the lightning, there are so many lessons, but they could be drawn as well from standing and watching this, this, the tide come in and out. Anything has a message for you. It is why... Uh, one of the valued uh, purposes of meditation and cultivating a meditative frame of mind so that you slow down these anxiety-driven processes that keep you from seeing anything, that you find the messages inherent in all that surrounds you. Yes. All right. Uh, for, uh, the first point. <coughs> say the first point again. That there's a time in the latter part of October. The latest release of Christ Energy has already occurred. Uh, it has been and continues to be triggered in each release by the solar eclipse, which has already occurred uh, this past week. The intensity of that wave of energy grows very rapidly and then reaches a level. And so always in the first weeks, particularly, of a new release of Christ energy is the most disorientation, the, the most uh, difficulty in assimilating it. It is, although the energy is growing stronger and more intense, it is more easily assimilable because you are growing in your strength with each assimilation. And uh, so uh, now, uh, in, in terms of worldwide connections, very, very important. The kinds of connections that do ignore artificial barriers between human beings stimulate conscious awareness of the true interconnection of all human beings. And so we, uh, we certainly give uh, uh, positive uh, reinforcement to all of these uh, kinds of uh, uh, prayer, meditation, uh, uh, financial help, uh, all of these things that transcend uh, politics, race, creed, so forth. Now, the second uh, question is something that we have uh, tried with varying success to explain a number of times, but it has to do with the multidimensionality of reality, that what you see is not all that you get, that in my house, as we always say, are many mansions, meaning many layers of reality, many levels, many dimensions, many possibilities. No possibility is without a reality uh, to uh, allow it to be exercised. You feel, you think, 
that you were born into a certain reality and have lived however long in that reality. Not so. The reality is in frequent change. There are many forks in the road, individually and collectively. And uh, so, in fact, you are shifting uh, realities, shifting dimensions in that sense, many times during the course of a life. Further, those who are not of the graduating class, now let's say you're all uh, on this path and you're all seniors and you've got the credits and you're ready to graduate and you're going to go on to the next stage of your education. Well, uh, the world, uh, like uh, school, is, uh, has many more undergraduates than graduates, many more freshmen and sophomores and juniors that are still working on the courses, that are still going through what needs to be gone through, and who will continue to do so until it's their turn to graduate. Now, it is, frankly, almost, and perhaps impossible, to make the leap of comprehension for the human mind in its present state of development because it only, only through increased exposure to the ideas of simultaneous incarnations, multiple realities, multiple dimensions, gradually as your comprehension grows, the exposure to these matters renders it more and more possible for you to get a glimpse and ultimately a clear vision of what is me meant by this multidimensionality. But suffice it, it must suffice for me to say that no one is cheated, no one loses, that everyone is an undergraduate and everyone becomes a graduate. Yes? Well, do you know... Uh, we're going to disappoint you because we're not going to get into that because it is a story in itself. It is a... almost fell into the temptation of starting. And once we start, there's no stopping point uh, for about an hour or so. But uh, we, we do want to say that we are going to be addressing that because it is very germane to this process now. It was a fact. It did exist. And it did destroy most indigenous life in many, but not all, parts of the planet. And uh, its purpose, naturally, was a part of the spiritual purpose, but in an earlier chapter of the development. But we'll get into that in detail. It's uh, just much too complex to get into now. Yes, are there more questions? If not, we will end this reading now, and we thank you all for your attention, and we bid you Godspeed as you face the challenges of your own fire of purification and transmutation into the joy of your own rebirth.